Welcome to the Deep Dive. Great to be here. Today, we're really getting into the weeds, uh, exploring some core concepts of modern ABAP development. Yeah, and we're using a bit of an unusual source, right? Exactly. It's actually an exam practice review, CABAPD 2507 certification, to be precise. Which sounds dry, maybe, but the questions really hit on fundamental stuff. That's the idea. Our mission is to pull out those key nuggets about, you know, RP, CDS, ABAP Cloud. The big ones. Right. And make them clear, relatable for you listening. We want to go beyond just like test answers and get to the why. Absolutely. I think looking at these technical questions is really valuable. They might be framed for an exam, but they um, they really shine a light on the core design principles. The architectural choices developers are making now. Precisely. Understanding these points is kind of a shortcut. You know, <laughs> a shortcut to grasping how you actually build robust applications, especially in ABA Cloud. Good point. And just for context, that exam is like 80 questions, multiple choice, some multiple response to. A fair bit to cover. Yeah, 180 minutes. And you need about a 65% to pass. So it does demand some real understanding. Which is the level we're aiming for today. Okay, let's dive in. ABAPI, a RESTful Application Programming Model, ROP. It's central, right? Totally central to modern ABAP. So when you're building with ROP, let's unpack this. What's the key thing, the object maybe, used to define how data gets created or updated or deleted? Okay, yeah, the cornerstone there is the behavior definition. Behavior definition, right. Its whole job is to specify the business logic for those CUD operations, create, update, delete. Ah, okay. It tells the ROP framework exactly which operations are allowed for a particular CDS entity. So for your specific data model piece. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And just as crucially, it defines the rules for how those operations work, like what validation needs to happen. Makes sense. It's like the rule book for that entity. Pretty much. Yeah. It centralizes that logic, which is a huge step up for consistency and uh, maintainability compared to scattering code everywhere. Okay. So you've got your data model. You've defined its behavior with the behavior definition. Got that foundation. Mm -hmm. Here's where it gets interesting for actually using it. How do you make that accessible, you know, as a service endpoint for other apps or UIs? Right, the exposure part. For that, in RAP, you create a service definition. Definition, okay. This is the object that takes your CDS entities and, importantly, <laughs> their defined behaviors. The ones from the behavior definition. Yes, exactly. And it bundles them up as part of a specific service. So it's like declaring this stuff is available. Precisely. The service definition specifies which parts of your data model are included in the service. That makes them ready for uh, service binding. Which connects it to the outside world. Yeah, connects it so it could be consumed, makes yeah. it an actual endpoint. It's the standard way you open up your RAP applications data. Super important for integration. Got it. Behavior definition for the rules, service definition for the exposure. Clear. Let's shift gears a bit then. Core Data Services CDS. Another huge pillar. Absolutely. And key to, well, smarter data modeling. So a crucial question here, what are the real advantages of using CDS associations compared to, you know, the old school database joins we used to write all the time? Oh, that's a great question. There are a couple of really big advantages. Sure. First one is all about readability and maintainability. It just makes the data model so much easier to understand. How so? Because with associations, the relationships between your different data entities are defined right there in the model itself. You're not writing join conditions over and over again in every single query. Ah, so the model itself knows how things connect. Exactly. It's more self-describing, more intelligent, makes it way easier to look at the model and grasp the connections, and much easier to maintain down the line. That makes a lot of sense. Cleaner code, less repetition. What's the second advantage? The second big one is how associations support navigation in consumption views without needing explicit SQL joins. Navigation. You mean moving between related data. Yeah. You can navigate between entities directly in your CDS views using the path defined by the association. Mm -hmm. You don't have to manually write the JOIN on clause every time you want to pull related data. Okay, that sounds much cleaner. It really is. It makes your queries, especially in consumption layers like Fiori elements or analytics, much more modular and, frankly, easier to write and understand. You leverage the relationships instead of rewriting them. That's a definite aha moment, I think, for anyone who's wrestled with complex joins. Just cleaner, more intuitive. Totally. It's a much more elegant way to handle relationships. All right, let's pivot again, this time to the ABA cloud environment. It has its own set of rules, its own focus on stability. Very much so. 
governance is key there. So thinking about APIs, what's the significance when an SAP API is marked with a released status in the ABI cloud? Why should developers care about that label? That release status is critical. It essentially means SAP has formally approved that API for public use. Okay, official stamp. Exactly. And crucially, it means the API is considered stable and SAP guarantees backward compatibility. Ah, the guarantee part is huge. It's everything, really. It gives developers the confidence to integrate with that API, knowing that SAP won't suddenly change it in a way that breaks their application in a future upgrade. So it removes a major risk factor. A huge one. It underpins the stability you need when building applications, especially enterprise scale ones, in the cloud. You can rely on it. It definitely reduces potential headaches. Okay, sticking with AB App Cloud rules, what about basic database stuff like SQL? Are there um, specific rules or restrictions on how you use SQL there? Yes, absolutely. Very specific rules. Two main things to remember about AB App SQL in AB App Cloud. Okay, what are they? First, only open SQL statements are allowed. Native SQL, like database specific hints or commands, is restricted. And why is that? It's mainly for platform independence and security. OpenSQL is the standardized database agnostic way to interact with the underlying ABI database in ABI Cloud. Keeps things consistent and secure. Makes sense for a cloud platform. What's the second point? Second point is that aggregate functions are fully supported within OpenSQL. So things like count, SUM, AVG. Exactly. Those are perfectly fine. You can use them directly in your OpenSQL queries to get summarized data right from the database layer. Which is efficient, right? Less data to transfer back. Very efficient. It pushes calculations down to the database where it makes sense. So open SQL only, but aggregates are definitely in. It's interesting how these rules, even seemingly small ones about SQL, really shape how you develop in the cloud. They create boundaries, but also ensure a certain level of quality and stability. That's the whole idea behind Avoplade's release to object approach and stricter rules. Consistency, stability, security. It's worth asking yourself how these granular decisions enable that shift. That's a great question. How do the micro decisions add up to the macro strategy? Something definitely worth pondering as you continue your own exploration into modern ABA. Indeed. Thank you for joining us on this deep dive. We hope it was insightful.